everyone so welcomes you all for this wonderful session this is the second session of the 12 session series so it is connected by the swara homeo gurukul in association with pioneer homeopathic medical college vadodara and bg gareya homeopathic medical college rajkot so my sincere gratitude to dr shekhar algunge sir from swara homeo gurukul and dr alpesh shah sir principal of pioneer homeopathic medical college and dr krishna shah ma principal of bg gareya homeopathic medical college and all the staff of the this both the colleges because this is a great opportunity for uh, young doctors like us and providing this opportunity I, i am very thankful for that and thanks to the coordinators dr ashish saparia sir from bg garaiya homeopathic medical college and dr alpesh shah sir from pioneer homeopathic medical college so without wasting anything we will enter into our topic my topic is concept of individualization so when we say see individualization is a concept so concept is not uh, it is a concept means idea it will be arised from some incidents something is not working so this has arrived in the same way in previous there was a generalization of the things were there so something some uh, aspects of the things are not working properly so the new concepts are arising in that way the concept of individualization is arrived so before entering into the my topic i want to start my topic with statement that this when we fail in individualization we fail in dash so fill in the blanks so you can chat in uh, chat box when we fail in individualization we will fail in dash because it is very important yes correct correct sir so homeopathy so yes correct when we fail in individualization we will fail in homeopathic practice not single homeopathy whether it is a theory or it is anything it is totally the homeopathic practice in your when you fail when you think this is your life then you will fail in your life also because home individualization is very important as a homeopath because right from the beginning of the case taking to the prescription of diet prescription every process is a individualization so case taking selection of the remedy and prescription of the potency prescription of the dose and diet everything depends on the person who is present at present in front of you the patient who is sitting in front of you depends upon him only it is not we have prescribed previously this way we will prescribe the same way in this patient means it doesn't work totally it is a different scenario so every patient is a individual so every process every step in homeopathy is a individualization according to that individual who is sitting in front of us so right from case taking prescription of uh, prescription selection of remedy in this way so homeopathy practice is science and art so where individualization is purely a artistic thing purely a artistic thing when we say it is a artistic thing so we required the art so homeopath should be a artist also in several ways not only theoretical way he is knowledgeable means it won't work he should be a artist also in what way 
in taking the case, in, prescri in prescribing a remedy, prescribing a particular potency, which potency has to be selected, which dose has to be given in different age groups, how we have to take the case in adults, child cases. We cannot take in the same manner in both the cases. So it's a different way we have to take. So he should be artistic. So if you want to be artistically, you have to be knowledgeable. Then you have to be involved in every aspects of your homeopathic career. Like in case taking, if you are learning a case taking, you have to involve into the process of case taking learning. In colleges also, if any lecturer is saying anything, we have to involve and learn the things. Then only we can learn homeopathy with very confidently and, and this process of individualization or the learning of homeopathic practice or this journey becomes very fruitful, very enjoyable also. So in this way, we have to cultivate these habits of involving and learning the things. Because this is a science different from other sciences. In allopathy, it is a generalization. And in homeopathy, it is an individualization. So when we see this is an individualization, it requires certain qualities. As a homeopath, you should have certain qualities. As an allopath, uh, they have that certain qualities. Everything has certain qualities. So we have to fulfill that qualities to become a better homeopath in your society. Yes. So individualization is an artistic process of understanding the reaction of a unit in a comparison of the other members of the group based on its peculiar characteristic distinguishing features. So here we say it is an artistic process. So we have to be an artist in this. So what we do here, understand the reaction of a unit or the person through his peculiar characteristic distinguished features and we differentiate that person with the other members of that group. So this is where individualization. So if we take one patient, we have to understand that patient as a whole through his peculiar, through his peculiar characteristic and distinguishing features. With these features, we have to differentiate other patients with this individual patient. So in this way, we have to be individualize the patient or the person or the total process. So here the important thing is peculiar characteristic distinguishing features. So whenever you want to individualize anything, there should be some peculiar things that has to be seen. You have to be keen in observation also. You have to alert with your sound senses to see that peculiar characteristic and distinguishing features. So to know that peculiar characteristic features, we have to know what are the common features also. So it is important that we have to learn both the things like medical diagnosis and the individual diagnosis. Like all the subjects in our uh, homeopathic system, anatomy, physiology, medicine, gynec, ops, and everything we have to learn to know the what is abnormality. If we don't learn this thoroughly, then whatever it comes, we think it is a peculiar because we don't know this is a common to this disease. So because of that, we have to learn thorough in our subject, anatomy, physiology, pathology, medicine, gynec ops, and along with that, Materia Medica, Repertory, Organum also. So that we can balance everything and we can do our practice in well, good manner. I hope everyone is understanding it.
तो टू हैव ए क्लासिकल एंड सक्सेस प्रैक्टिस ऑफ ए होम्योपैथी इज पॉसिबल ओनली बाय प्रोसेस ऑफ इंडिविजुअलाइजेशन सो मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ साइंस एंड सिम्टम्स डिपेंड्स अपॉन द कॉज ऑफ द डिसीज एंड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ द पेशेंट सो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू लर्न दिस थिंग्स द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ द पेशेंट depending upon the constitution of the patient and the cause of the disease the disease manifestations are seen for example if the constitution is stronger if the cause of the disease is very weak then it won't produce because the constitution of the patient or the reaction of the patient is strong enough to fight back that disease so there won't there we won't see the much symptoms signs and symptoms if the cause of the disease is stronger and the constitution of the patient is weaker the cause of the disease is able to alter the state of the this constitution or the patient then it can produce the signs and symptom there is a tug of war between these two things so signs and symptoms are arrested so individual reaction and production of symptoms depend upon his constitution so constitution is important so we have we are having the similar anatomical structure and physiological function it doesn't mean we are same we all are different and individual so we are everyone is different in different in their mental physical and behavioral manner no persons are alike the same way no substance in the universe are alike every person reacts according to their own way according to their own constitution that reaction we have to understand they just according to their constitution they react according to their constitution their thought process their reflexes their movements according to the situation their changes everyone don't have the same movements in the same situation everyone has different movements different thought process in that situation so emotion they perceive in different manner the situations they perceive they react they affect in different different manner so they express in different manner these are the things which we have to see in this uh, individualization this is a purely artistic one so these are all are the things his movements his behavior his thought process his uh, perception his desires aversions his likes dislikes hobbies these all are the things which individualizes the patient the thermal reaction the pattern of sweating see here anything is not diseased one they are generalized one so through this we can individualize that patient individually their sleep patterns their dreams their hobbies their interest everything says the individuality of that patient so from now onwards if you are seeing a patient you don't look after his only the disease along with disease we have to look after everything how he is narrating his complaint how he is expressing his uh, problems how is his state this have to be seen so this is about the individualization there are the three steps of individualization they are understanding the individuality of the patient and studying the individual action of the drug substance and selecting the individual remedy which is very similar to the individuality of the patient that is nothing but the selection of the remedy how we can select the remedy so these are the three steps we will look after step by step what are the things we have to be cautious so first step is individualization of the patient yes it is a first step in our practice when we studying the case it is first step is to understand the patient so there is a process of case taking to understand the patient 
is the process of case taking. So it is very important process. In this process, when we say it is a process, we have to keep in this mind that when we say it is a process, it is not a single thing that is happening. There are the multiple things happens in this process. So we have to train every things, every steps in this process. So case taking is not like only writing and listening and only writing. There are the many qualities, any many adequities which we have to learn during the case taking process. So in this process, we try to understand the person holistically to solve his problem. We understand here, we are not judging the patient. This is this patient, this is this patient, this is, he is an anger patient. It is not judgment, it is an understanding. First we listen to him and then we understand him and we will prescribe. So understand holistically to solve his problem. Here we are not to have any business with patient. We are purely to solve his problem. That is his complaint or his altered state. To solve that problem, we have to understand that patient as a holistically. So what is that problem? Where is that problem? How is that problem? How does that problem is affecting that person? How this person is reacting to that problem? What he is doing for that problem? These are all the things which we have to take note. Then only we can understand clearly what is his state. So, in this process, there is a different questioning patterns are changed. According to the disease, according to the individual who is sitting, according to the age, the questioning patterns changes. We cannot ask uh, same way as we ask to the, we cannot ask in children the same way as we ask to elders. We have to change our pro, uh, process of asking. We have to change our body language in this process of asking questions. There is a different set of questions which we have to ask to children and adults in different diseases. In gynec cases, we have to ask different questions. In this way, it is all the things are artistic and its own individual case taking in given case. There is a no fixed format. While case taking, the symptoms are scattered. In this case taking process, we give the direction to the symptoms, whatever narrated by the patient. So this is where we individualize the patient. The person is loquacious. So our questioning pattern differs. We think he is a loquacious person. That, that indicates if the person is restless, it clearly indicates, he clearly tells us he is a restless, a restless person. In this way, we can individualize mentally, physically restless. We here we will diagnose the patient and the disease. Is it clear? I hope it is understandable. Yeah, thank you, sir. So in aphorism 82, the Hanuman says that as no real cure of this or other diseases can take place without a strict particular treatment of each case of disease. That means he says that no real cure happens if there is a no particular treatment. That means individualization is happening here. The treatment process also individualization. The way you treat in particular case is also individualistic in its own way. So individual case requires individual way of process. That we have to learn through our practice from seniors, from our uh, uh, lecturers, in our clinical uh, sessions. We have to learn this practice, not only the content of that uh, topic, but how they are uh, taken the case, 
what are the things they have done during that case taking how they have learned these all things we have to learn from the speakers or anywhere from the lecturer lecture hall or in our classrooms also so to individual many ways are there to individualize the patient some of the ways are constitution the gravels gravels dr gravels has uh, classified the constitutions into the carbo carbo nitrogenide constitution hydrogenide constitution and oxygenide constitution these are based on the chemical content of the body he has classified in this way also we can differentiate the person so in carbon nitrogenide constitution there is a oxygen is very less the carbon content and the nitrogen content in the, our body is more so by this we can know that what kind of diseases they can get how their physiological functional process is changed his constitution is changed they they get respiratory diseases like breathlessness or the congestions or shortness of the breath like this they get urinary problems they are very active persons they are hypochondriac persons irritable and impatient type of persons these constitution persons they are mostly get the diseases of the joints these are the person who get the diseases of the joints for example rust talks how they are they are how much restless anxious their joints are affected their joints feels very stiff stuck feelings so how they are anxious about their disease anxiety with restlessness we see the rust talks remedy and one more constitution is hydrogenide constitution hydrogenide constitution is here the water content is more in his body so they are there is a retention of the water in the blood and the tissues are takes place it's like a psychotic type of personalities but they are affected very easily by the water uh, by bathing or going to sea shores they are the thin pa patient they are the uh, flabby persons they are the lethargic for example we see the uh, tuja tuja persons how they are psychotic how they are, they have that warts Psy we can say that by the disease only we can say that they are the psychotic persons so hydrogenide persons hydrogenide constitution persons are like they are very active they are very nervous mentally and physically they are very great restlessness we are we will see in this type of person their appetite is vigorous they are the thin patients they get mostly the degenerative diseases example we see in the mercury patient or the kali iod patients iodum patients how they are restless how they are active they are very responsible and at they are very active personalities impatient impulsive in this way we can differentiate they talk also very rapid they talk in this way we can differentiate persons depending upon the constitutions so depending upon the temperament also we can differentiate these persons like if you say mostly the temperament is affected influenced by the surrounding environment so according to the surrounding environment they react by this we can say that this is a this personality is because reaction come from his constitution his vital force so this is very important to learn the temperaments if they are the sanguine temperament how will be this person they are the optimistic they are the hopeful and confident this persons will get blood uh, blood and vascular diseases for example we see the remedies like aconite but this is a very good remedy in the myocardial infarctions so in this type of diseases we will cure the aconite person the aconite person how he is very anxious fearful 
fearful in this way. So phlegmatic persons. These are the phlegmatic temperament persons are like sluggish, indifferent, calm, very lazy. These are the temperament person. These are lethargic, calm going peoples. These people get the lymphatic diseases more often. Venous stasis. This way we can differentiate the person. So bilious temperament persons, where there is a temperament, uh, they have the tendency for liver diseases. Generalized phlegmatic patients, generalized pigmentation we will see in this type of patients. High blood pressures, ill-humored person. Whereas in nervous temperament patients, they are the mentally and physically active persons. They are easily reactive. They are impatient, impulsive. They take quick decisions. They talk also in very fast. So when the person is talking very fast, we know this person is very fast uh, going person. Then our questioning pattern, our behavior pattern, our noting pattern, everything has to be changed. It should not be like it is. It should not be like he is talking uh, fast. We are very slow. We have to match his susceptibility, match his wavelength. Then only the case taking process will grow uh, fruitfully, and it is a good conversation will be happening. In this way, this is the artistic things we have to learn. They have the nervous weakness, where we see they are the irritable patients. We see in Naxvamika, Argentum Mitricum, this type of people were nervous, very nervous. So now we have seen that these are the people, how we can differentiate the person. So what are the qualities of the physician to individualize that patient? What are the qualities you have to be there? As a physician, what are the qualities you have to be there? Let us see. So, in aphorism 83, Hanuman says that individualizing examination of the case of a disease for which I shall only give in this place general direction. Here, Hanuman gives only a general directions of which the practitioners will bear in the mind. Only what is applicable for each individual case. Demands of physician nothing but. So, physicians should have these qualities during the case taking that are freedom from prejudice, sound senses, attention in observing and fidelity in tracing the true picture of the disease. So, Hanuman gives this in aphorism 83. We have to understand the each and every word because it is very important. We see freedom from prejudice means there should not be any fixed ideas. This is a Naxvamika patient. This is a Lycopodium patient. He is a Lacrosis patient. This is, we should not have uh, fixed ideas. We should be have unprejudiced way. Because by past experience, what we have seen different cases, we, that will come into our mind during that case taking. We have to detach from that past experience, our emotions, our uh, desires, aversions, our reactions. So we have to be calm in that process. Initial stage of the case taking, we have to be, we have to allow the patient to talk. We should not be prejudiced. prejudiced. We have to unprejudiced and see that patient, what, how he is narrating, what way he is narrating, narrating. What is the things he is narrating? Everything we have to be seen. When it is possible, we have to detach from our past experiences. We have seen Naxvamika patient, Naxvamika patient. We should not think, we should not keep that Naxvamika in mind and we have to see the patient. We have to detach from that experience of that case. This is totally new case. So sound senses also has to be there. Sound senses. We are here to build a portrait of the disease. 
here we have to uh, we have to take the signs and symptoms to take the signs and symptoms we have to have the senses very alert we have to have the sound senses sound sensor senses when we say when we will say this is this senses are sound when they are utilized proper way undisturbed manner uninterrupted manner unbiased way then we can say our senses are sound that means we that means this has to be trained this our senses has to be trained how to uh, see the patient because senses always compare the things senses are tuned in the form of comparing the things patient is saying i am good doctor patient is saying i am good doctor that means he is not only saying he is good someone is bad he is comparing are you seeing these things in his talk he is saying this yesterday i was better that means today he is not better are you listening this this is where our senses has to be uh, alert our senses has to be a sound and attention in observing so observation we have to be unprejudiced observer the pa how the patient is walking how the patient is talking is a patient is uh, anxious angry depressed worried timid jealous how is his body posture how is his facial expression pain what is his texture what is his physical appearance how he is walking these all things has to be observed attentively it is not like you are on the whatsapp and the patient is coming inside this should not be done you have to very cre clear and attentive while taking the case then only we can observe each and everything whatever the patient is doing and saying so that is where attention is observing is very important so fidelity in tracing the picture that means we have to be faithful and loyal in noting and writing or recording the signs and symptoms of that patient so we cannot uh, write something whatever the say in the what are the patient is saying we are writing something and patient is saying something we should not be like that as it is we have to write everything whatever the patient is saying we have to write in our case sheet so that we can build a better totality of the symptoms so these are the qualities of the physician so it demands the patience the physician has to be to have these qualities he should have patience we have to cultivate the patience if the physician don't have that patient then uh, patient won't say anything to us he cannot uh, reveal his own all the state we have to be patient and listen to the patients training we have to train well trained in our colleges or from some other practitioners we have to go and train this practical tips from our books from our lecturers experience we have to train these things intelligence alertness these are these are where we have to alert and attentive during the case taking process this can be learned by practice only this can be learned by involving when we involve in this process we can learn everything this all can be learned so knowledge of the medicine knowledge of the disease application of remedy to the disease state so this all has to be kept in the mind so experience on the physician part also plays a very important role during the individualizing the patient so till now we have seen the individualization of the patient is it okay for everything everyone the pace of the talk or the everything is okay is it, is it understandable yeah thank you sir
I hope everyone is getting things better way. So individualization of the drug. So now we have individualized the patient. Now it is that if you want to select the remedy, we have to know about the remedy also. We have to know about the drug also or the medicine. In aphorism 19, the Honeyman says that it is very evident that medicines could never cure disease if they do not possess the power of altering man's state of health, which depends on sensations and functions. So he clearly says, Honeyman gives the direction that the medicine or the drug, not the drug, the medicine. So because for drug proving, we will prescribe the medicine only. So medicine, the medicine which has the capacity to alter the state of health only can have the capacity to cure the disease. So he says that disease producing power is a disease curing power of medicine. Hanuman says that it is a disease producing power is a disease curing power of a medicine. So it can be done in the process of drug proving. So it is if you want to learn the if you want to know about the medicine, that medicine has to undergo the process of drug proving. So what happens in drug proving? In aphorism 105, the Honeyman says it is a process of acquiring the knowledge of the instrument. The instrument is nothing but the medicine intended for the cure of the natural disease, investigating the pathogenic power of medicines. So that is, that is where it is very important to know the process of drug proving. So to know the knowledge of the medicine, we have to know the process of drug proving also. The physician has to be a uh, has to know this process of drug probing also. So this process is happened with the fixed and eternal loss and the principle. Because drug probing, there is a, some process, something is happened where the drugs are potentized, the potentization, drug dynamization is a law. It is a fixed principle on which this process is happening then it is a reliable process. So in this process, the moderate and small doses are given to the provers where crude and the higher doses is not prescribed mostly because this produces the toxicological effects. It may lead to a deep pathological cases. To get the functional disturbance, functional symptoms, we will provide the small and moderate moderate doses so that we can get the functional disturbances that symptoms can be recorded in the book that is in the materia medica so here we have to learn one more thing is idiosyncratic prover about idiosyncratic prover these are the provers very important in homeopathic uh, homeopathic uh, proving when homeopathic medicines are proving these are the very important provers because these are the provers who can give that PQRS symptoms through which we can individualize that remedy from the other remedy, other remedies and also from the other provers also. These are the provers who give the characteristic symptoms. Deepest, deepest rare symptom also these people will give. Because they are idiosyncratic, they are sensitive for that medicine. So they can prove its most PQRS symptom also. So there is a no surrogates, no substitutes for particular state of a disease. So we have to keep in mind that in homeopathy, there are the no surrogates, no substitute medicine for particular state of a disease. For particular state, there is a only one remedy is there. There is a no substitute for that state. For example, uh, in fever cases, if there is a, it is a belladonna case, we cannot prescribe the aconite medicine because there is a no belladonna is available in our clinic or we don't know about the belladonna. We cannot prescribe the aconite because 
it won't work. If it also work also, it, it can relieve, but it doesn't cure the person's state. So every individual disease has individual medicine. That what uh, Kent says in individualization, he says that there is a one remedy that is needed in the case, whether it is known or not, it is needed in the case and it has no substitute. See how clearly he is saying, there is a one in that particular case, only one remedy is indicated, which is very peculiar, very uh, suitable, very similimum for that disease. So to get that similimum, we have to learn everything, each and everything in this homeopathy. So every drug we have to know. Every properties, every symptom in every drug we have to know. Then only we can prescribe that drug. It may be that which cannot see, see that it is needed. It may not appear in that in, to be indicated, but it is needed. All the same. Though the intimation may not have come to the eye or ear of the physician, if that does, if the things are not able to seen by the physician, not able to hear by the physician, it is a physician's problem. That physician has to develop himself to reach that better homeopath, better artistic homeopath. Then only we can prescribe these all things. So there is a necessity of waiting and watching and also the learning of the things. So in this, so after the drug proving, we will note all the symptoms in Materia Medica. The true Materia Medica is, contains the collection of pure, reliable, unaltered real effects produced by the simple single drug substance. So if you want to learn about the drug or the medicine, we have to study the Materia Medica. So there are the different types of Materia Medica. There are two types of Materia Medicas, which are, they are unmodified and the modified ones. Unmodified. What are the Materia Medicas we are using right now is a modified Materia Medicas. What are unmodified Materia Medica are Materia Medica Pura by the Samuel Honeyman and condensed Materia Medica by Herring C. Why they are say unmodified? What is the importance of them is the all the proving symptoms are symptoms are seen in that books. All the proving symptoms, PQRS symptoms, mental symptoms, mind symptoms, phys physical symptoms, mental genders, physical genders, pathological symptoms. All the symptoms, characteristic symptoms, everything is seen in that unmodified material medicals. So we, if you want to learn drug properly, we have to study this material medical pura and condensed material medical by herring. So modified material medicals are that which every according to the individual author, they have made their own picture of the disease for easy prescription. That's why Kent, Kent wanted to pictureize the whole drug. So he started saying the lectures. That lectures in pictureized manner he started saying. So they are recorded and they are given as a homeopathic material medica. Lectures on homeopathic medica, Kent. And whereas Allen keynotes, in this there is only PQRS symptoms, characteristic symptoms. So Allen taken the characteristic symptom. When we study this Allen keynote, we get all the characteristic symptoms of that drug. Boric, the clinical diagnosis of the disease and the person. He taken that. In this way, individual author has taken uh, according to their uh, perception, they have taken things from the unmodified material medica and they built their own material medicas. So we have to study unmodified material medicas, material medica pura, condensed material medica to understand drugs in better way. 
and it also helps in individualization in better way. So this is very important slide. So every physical complaint have at least one characteristic symptom. As a homeopath, your duty is to develop the skills of finding that characteristic symptom that we have to develop. That means every physical complaint have at least one, one PQRS or the characteristic symptom. That means, for example, if we take headache, headache, see, head pain, the patient comes with the head pain symptom. So when we think of the symptom physical complaints, LSMC, L means location, sensation, modalities, concomitant. See, location, depending on the location, where is the head pain? Pain is where? It is in temporal, it is in vertex, it is in frontal, it is in occipital, it is which side, left side or right side? So this is peculiar to every drug, every person. So by location only we can say that this is the person belongs to this drug. So that's why we have to be in case, we have to very alert, very precise in case taking process. Which side of the headache, left side, right side, temporal pain or frontal headache or the occipital headache, vertex, we can differentiate. If it is a left side, it is sanguine area. It is right side, spigelia. It is a frontal headache, gelsemium. In this way, drugs are differentiated. This is where we have to be very alert. This skill we have to learn. It should not be like, like allopers, we should not prescribe the things. Headache, we have to give belladonna. Headache, we have to give aconet. Not like that. We have to be precise in their location. Sensation. For example, sensation, what type of pain it is? Throbbing type, bursting type, or pricking type, or nail driven type. For different sensation, different types of remedies are there. It is not a single pain, it is a different types of pain, which can be expressed by the different individuals in different manner according to their constitution. Modalities. Modalities where we see uh, modalities itself a PQRS. Itself a PQRS because whatever the symptom he is getting, he expresses according to his constitution. His con constitution modifies that disease and express externally in different way. That's why modalities are given very importance in our selection of remedies. See, first moment aggravation, continu continuous moment amelioration. We think of <clears throat> rust ox. So it is the, that much importance is given to individualize the drug. For example, in this headache only, if we expose to sun, we get the headache. We prescribe natramure. If the headache is amelioration aggravated by the sun exposure, natramure. If the headache is ameliorated by the sun headache, uh, sun exposure, then we will give strontium car. These are the individualization of the drugs. In this way, we can prescribe. So concomitant, again concomitant. Concomitant itself is a PQRS. Headache is relieved by urination. We prescribe gelsemium. So it is a keynote symptom of that drug. So from now onwards, if you are seeing cases in OPDs or in your classroom or in your uh, practical sessions, in clinical classes, don't see just as a joint pain. Don't see just as a headache. You have to individualize there. Precise in your noting the symptoms. That skill has to be developed as a homeopath. Location, sensation, modalities, concomitants. So back pain in small spots, calicar, warts on the sternum, there is a nitric acid. In this way, we can individualize. If you know these things, only you can individualize. You can give better remedy. So there is a sensation, lump-like sensation, hair-like sensation, 
knee pain stinging type belladonna modalities so first movement aggravation continuous movement amelioration rush talks hmm. dam weather aggravation we can prescribe dalkamara in this way it's very important to know about the medicines so we have to learn every day materia medica every day at least one drug concomitant headache relieved by urination perspiration with pain is it getting or it is fast going So discharges in discharges also when we see discharge different remedies of different types of discharges their color depending on the color also it is dif differing the remedies are different if the discharge is yellowish greenish we will we can prescribe antim tart natrum sal etc if the discharges like menstrual discharges or the leucorrhea they if the discharge color is different the different remedies are indicated orders order depending upon the order the sweat sweat urine and perspiration depending upon their order smell we can differentiate the remedies offensive cadaverous uh, like uh, in benzoic acid there is a different type of smell offensive smell in uh, urine in sepia different type of smell in this way we can differentiate the remedies consistency the discharge if it is a thin watery then we will think of allium sepia in nasal discharges hmm? in rust talks aconite if the, it is a thick discharge we think of the kali bike in this way we can differentiate the remedies so we have to learn materia medica and also the ailments from complaints after typhoid complaints after disappointment of love ailments this is a very important during the case taking in different diseases also whereas one sided diseases ailments helps very much very crucial crucial role in uh, individualizing the drug complaints after the fright any emotional things fright fear like the drugs like stromonium belladonna hyoscyamus these are the different remedies which we can prescribe so depending upon the mind symptom also we can differentiate the different remedies there are the different conditions different types of uh, symptoms are expressed by the patient the fear some persons have the fear of accidents some persons have the fear of diseases some persons have the fear of uh, misfortune so different different remedies that fear individualizes the individualizes the person and the drug anxieties anxiety about disease anxiety about the future anxiety about uh, things in this way many things are there somewhere memory concentration mistakes mistakes in talking writing reading so in especially in the child cases where there are uh, parents come and say my child is not writing properly his memory is weak doctor if i say anything he forgets immediately if i say him to buy something go go to shop and buy something he forgets easily so our remedies have different remedies are there for memory uh, concentration for memory weakness so we can prescribe different remedies ailments from grief vexation mortification indignations anger from indignation like staphylococcus lactanum from the mortification or the torture thing ailments from disappointment of love natrum your pulstilla in this way we can differentiate depending upon their mind symptom and this also differentiate the persons 
these also differentiate the kingdom wise the animal kingdom people they are very jealous planning anger oriented impatience quick in this way kingdom wise also we can differentiate the remedies different persons have different delusions delusions itself uh, delusions itself if anyone is coming with the delusion symptoms it itself individualizes the person so it is very important to know that delusion to learn about the delusion symptoms so different types of different type of case taking is seen in during the delusion you know, when we are handling the delusion patients so till now we have seen uh, regarding the individualization of the patient and individualization of the drug now let us see one case so this is a case it is taken early morning on full phone call the patient called and said when i am going for stool there is a bleeding is coming from the rectum pain also present this is a burning type of pain he said uh, doctor sir uh, there is a khun nikal raha hai bathroom jaate samay aur पेन भी आ रहा है ज्यादा पेन है अभी तक पेन अभी भी है इसीलिए आपको कॉल कर रहा है एंड स्वेलिंग uh, भी है बोल रहा था पेशेंट सो ही सेट स्वेलिंग इज आल्सो प्रेजेंट सो आई सेड हिम टू सेंड मी द फोटो आई सेड हिम टू सेंड मी द फोटो देन आई आस्क हिम व्हाट फूड यू हैव टेकन लास्ट नाइट regular food only doctor he said because it is since since today morning only so what are the things he has taken to know what are the what had happened yesterday i asked what food you have taken so he said regular food only doctor so i asked any there there was a no set, certain things uh, regarding the food and the things then i asked about the any stressful incident happened since last two days so he said fight with boss i have not done any wrong he is blaming me so i got anger and came off from the company so it is on the phone call so i have take i have listened this it was a short conversation and i sent him the photograph to send the photograph then he sent this photograph this was the condition of that patient so i took the rubrics mind injustice cannot support rectum pain burning smarting stool after persisting for long time rectum pain violent rectum hemorrhoids hemorrhaging bleeding stool during because i don't know clearly whether it is a prolapse or the hemorrhoid because this was a case taken in when i was in internship when i was in internship this was a case taken at that time i don't know what was this condition whether it is a prolapse or the hemorrhoids but i know this is a symptom is present so purely basing on the symptom i have prescribed the remedy basing on the symptom i have prescribed the remedy nitric acid 1 m so 1 m i have prescribed so i have uh, said him to take the cool cool things some diet prescription also said and then the result was this this one so day 1 was like this day 2 it was decrease it was went inside day 3 like this and day 5 totally went inside now it is not there so i have only took 5 days pics and this was the case so this is where the homeopathy if the correct remedy is prescribed the uh, the result would be like this so the symptoms whatever the symptoms you are uh, taking the symptom you have to be clear in taking noting the symptom and prescribing selecting the remedy is also important
so third point is selecting individual remedy which very similar to the individuality of the patient so third step is selecting the remedy to a individual patient now we have studied about the patient now studied about the drug we know about the patient and we know about the drugs now our duty is to prescribe the remedy select the remedy it is purely based on the totality of the symptoms why we will form the totality of the symptoms why we will form the totality of the symptom what is the importance of forming the totality of the symptoms we have to get these questions because why we form this totality because during the case taking process we will be getting the symptoms scattered manner here and there during the totality when we are forming the totality of the symptoms we grade the symptoms we give value to that symptoms which symptom is more peculiar for that patient which individualizes that patient according to that we will grade our symptoms so according to the uh, grading we take totality of the symptoms during our analysis and evaluation we will give the grading of the symptoms so different authors have different types of totality of symptom different idea of totality of forming a totality of the symptoms so different types of symptoms are seen in totality of the symptoms so every method has its own philosophy like de deductive inductive logic their own philosophies so there are the different methods like hanimanian method Kantian method on and boring Hausen method, boring method. Whereas Hanimanian method, where he says about the common symptom and uncommon symptoms. Whereas the Kent methods, he divided the symptoms into generals, particulars, common symptoms. Whereas the boring Hausen, he divided into seven, seven symptoms. There the twist, twist, twerk. Ubi, Vervas, Auxilus, Commando, Quando. In this way, he has divided into seven types symptom. According to that, he will individual, he will form the totality of the symptoms. And Boger, Grat Boger, basic symptom and determinative symptom. Like this, different authors have made their own way of totality of symptoms. We will see one method, Kentian method, where the Kent has given importance. How is he individualizes the patient according to the patient, uh, his symptoms? So he gives importance for the generals. He says that generals are very important to individualize the patient when in forming the totality of the symptoms. So he given importance to generals like mental general. Generals means that says about the person holistically, like love, hate, mental emotions. These emotions, these mental emotions not related to particular part. It is not related to liver. It is not related to kidney. It is holistically saying about the person. So it is given much importance. The sexual spheres, perversions, fears. Fears says about the person holistically. Dreams, desires, aversions. So every individual having the different, different desires. In a case, the desires are coming. These are given importance. Aversions, jealous, suspicious, depressions, loquacity, weeping, laughing, delusions, hallucinations, confusions, different types of delusions. So these are the symptoms which are given importance, first importance. Later on physical generals. In physical generals, it desires and aver aversions, special periodic periodicity of the symptoms in relation to the time, month, season, hours. If the patient is saying, 
I am getting sim. For example, arsenic patient, midnight aggravation, midnoon aggravation. So this is a symptom which he has to give importance. So while forming a totality, these are given given importance. So complaints related to the complaints related to the <clears throat> sides of the body. So left sided, right sided, alternate sides. This type of symptoms, changeable symptoms, one part to other parts, these types of symptoms are given much importance because this individualizes the patient. So in homeopathy, individualization of patient is very important. Depending on that only our remedy selection is based. Based on that only our remedy selection happens. In general, subject to sensations, depending upon the sensation, stitching type, stinging type, throbbing type, burning type, shock-like pains, different sensations, which individualizes particular person, particular remedy. Symptoms related, related to the special senses. So these are this is these are very important to understand because special senses, especially in the child cases, especially in the autistic cases, where their senses are abnormal. Like their senses like hearing, they are sensitive to noises, light, smell. In this way. So in artistic cases, what happens, this normal senses, either they aggravate, they are more sensitive or they are less sensitive. So during individualization in that cases, we have to see these senses. Patient come and say, my child is, uh, doesn't want to hear any noises, doctor. Whenever he hears the noise, he behaves like this. That means he is very sensitive to that noise. His senses are altered. In this way, these are very important. In smell of cooking, some of the remedies like colchicum. In this way, we can differentiate the person and the remedy. General pathological conditions like anemia, edema, atrophies. They are the general pathological conditions. These are not related to particular part. These are, these are not related to local organs. Like it is not the edema of the uh, some organ. It is the overall thing. When the overall the person is affecting, then the edema is seen. Then the atrophies are seen. Anemia, this type of condition where this individualizes the patient. Physical discharges like perspiration, menstruation. Every individual has different types of perspiration. Their perspiration their, uh, differs. Someone has on the forehead, someone have on the heads, someone have palms and soles. This individualizes the person and the drug. When we select correct remedy, these all things will be gone. So particular... Later, after the giving importance to mental journals and the physical journals, he gives importance to the particulars. Particulars, he comes now to the local symptoms, particular organ symptoms. What are all the things that are there locally? How that local organ is affected? Inflammations, like that. Now he will take these symptoms. Later, common symptoms which are present in every case, every individual disease. So in this way, he forms the totality of the symptom. So this is where the importance of evaluation of the symptoms. That's why we have to thoroughly know about the which are characteristic symptoms, which are PQRS symptoms, which are common symptoms, which are uncommon symptoms, which are pathological symptoms. These all learned from the books, practice and from our lectures. So this is about the 
individualization of the things like patient drug and selection of the rendi further we also can individualize the potency and the dose also depending upon the individual who have are sitting in our in front of us we can individualize the patient ha huh, potency so child if he is a, his vital force is very active uh, we can put, uh, we can prescribe the 1m potency very dull 30 potency in this way according to a person we can uh, prescribe the potencies so we will see the one case this is a patient case of arthritis this is a patient male patient of age 48 years i ask tell me sir he said about the pain in both upper and lower limbs pain in ankle joint since since 6 months dragging type of pain i am also having adaptation problem aggravated by after eating i ask what else ankle joint pain is more it's tearing pain when i press it i feel better touch also aggravates i don't feel comfortable i tell my wife to press it or i walk for 10 minutes and sit then only i can feel better if i feel this tingling sensation dragging pain or numbness then i walk for 10 minutes so movement ameliorates i have difficulty in walk in the morning to walk immediately after getting up so i asked tell about that difficulty for example when i get up after dinner i go for walk for 10 minutes at least in a hall even though i walk 3 kilometers in the evening when i start feeling tingling sensation i am not able to move immediately fast i move few steps and then i feel i can increase my pace initially the pace of the movement is less and later he is start increasing the pace when i have pain i cannot walk fast immediately i asked meaning means before sitting what pace i have walked after getting up i cannot walk in that pace i have to move for at least 10 to 15 steps come to normal pace at least you have to move for 10 to 15 steps to have a normal pace of movement so i ask it tell about there is a lot of burning pain tingling sensation numbness will be there there then you have to walk or press in day time you won't feel like this you are fine you can walk a normal pace in the evening or night this ankle and hand fingers feel numbness numb feeling irritation describe numb i asked about the numb when i sit numbness increases if i cannot move pain increases literally the moment i sleep shock like tearing pain tearing type of pain increases even in bed i start moving then i feel little better so in the bed also he is restless he is moving here and there so the moment improves the state if there is a no moment i keep be- it keep becoming worst experience in that state it's like nerves dragging nerves i feel like my nerves stuck my feet has stuck so unless i don't unless i don't give it a pressure unless i don't move or un, or unless i don't walk it become stiff little bit more stiff numb becoming cold and losing its senses there is a no circulation boils appears burning so 
see many words are coming stuck stiff <clears throat> in in this way many words are coming we have to keep noting these all things little bit more stiff numbness becoming cold and losing its senses there is a no circulation boils boils appears burning hmm. nerve pain tearing pain in different parts in different par parts also this type of things are seen different joints <clears throat> when i do it continuously i feel better i improve my sensation tell about erectations now i came for the other complaints tell about the erectation it is a burning heaviness will be there in chest it's like gripping type see it's like gripping type when air does not doesn't passes from up it goes from down when air doesn't go then i feel like stuck feeling see in joint complaints also there is a stuck feeling stiff feeling here it is also a stuck feeling and gripping type when the person is staying holistically his complaints in every complaint we will see this type of sensations this is where the individualization of the patient every complaint has to be say the same thing same sensation has to be experienced by the patient tell about stuck and heaviness when gas is not coming out from up or down or if it coming from up or it struggling it to come out it struggling out to come out struggle in the chest there is a heaviness gas is trying to come out it is not releasing out trying to come out even though it is releasing little by little still some struggle is there because i know gas is not coming how is expressing his uh, abdominal complaints see describe that struggle it's not free discomfort in that tube it's like gripping heaviness it's not long time it's for short time gas comes out with loud sound then i feel better how is your sleep sleep was disturbed due to this pain so this was the case so i have repertorized the case and the this was a repertorial totality and the remedy was rustox sulfur bryonia calcarea nutsomica these all remedies were came analysis of the case is patient came with a complaints of pain in both upper and lower limbs ankle joint pain and erectations in their case there is a strong modalities are present aggravation by first moment aggravation evening and the night aggravations and amelioration continuous movement there is a sensation of stuck stiffness heaviness in the joints and the chest complaint also in the both complaints the both the sensations are seen reaction to that is want to move movement the continuous movement amelioration so it, its miasm is typhoid miasm according this typhoid miasm to understanding purpose this is a combination of a acute miasm and the sora miasm this is a combination of acute and the sora whatever we study regularly in classrooms it is a acute miasm and the sora where the acute is the situations are sudden where the sora is a hopeful state so typhoid miasm is a mix of this both the things that's why remedy is the rust tox under this typhoid miasm there is a remedy rust toxicodendron the potency prescribed was a 200 and follow up after one month the patient is feeling better his ankle joint pain is decreased by 80% and erectation decreased now patient able to have sound sleep so this is about the case so this is about the 
individualization. So now let us recap what we have learned in this session. So we have learned about the individualization of the patient, individualization of the drug, in individualization of the patient, the case taking process, how much importance, importance of case taking, how should be the physician, how should be his senses, everything we have learned in individualization of the patients, where the constitutions, temperaments. In drug, when we are individualizing the drug, there are the we go through the process of drug probing, about the drug probing, in that importance about the idiosyncratic prover, and there is a no surrogates, no substitute medicine, and how we can learn what is the importance of knowledge of having the knowledge of medicine. So learning the material medical properly. How we can see the characteristic symptoms in every physical complaints. And later we come to case of uh, bleeding per rectum. Uh, you have seen the result. And later we have come with the third step of individualization that is the selection of remedies. It is based on the totally based on the totality of the symptoms. So different method, different authors have the different methods of totality of the symptoms. So we have seen one method where the Kentian method, how he have valued the symptoms. In whole case, in, scatter, in case taking process, the scattered manner we are getting, how that has valued, to which symptom he has given the importance that we have seen. And after that, we have seen one case of arthritis. And this is about the this session of individualization. I hope everyone has understood this. Before conclude, I want to say about this for our Instagram uh, page. So whatever we have learned these things. At college, we have learned things, but practically artistic way, what I am saying from the initial part, artistic way, these have learned through the pro practice and also by the guidance. Guidance from our guru, my guru, Shekhar Algundi sir and Priyanka ma'am and Divya ma'am and also from our lecturers. So after attending the Swara Homeo Gurukul, where we have learned many things, this artistic process of seeing the case and artistically individualizing the patient and the drug and selecting the remedy, potencies, these all things can be learned in Swara Homeo Gurukul. So there is a, if you want to learn things, there is a videos are uploaded on in this Swara Instagram page. You can see in that page, many hints are hints we will get. So ID is Swara Homeo Clinic and Gurkul. So you can follow this page. So you can get the tips, how to practice the homeopathy, how to take the case. And there are the many videos also there. And your queries can be asked in this page also. And there is a Swara Homeo Gurkul Academy uh, YouTube channel where you can see the many videos. Every video is like gem like. From every video, you can learn many things. There is a video uh, regarding the case taking. Video, videos regarding the uh, clinical practice, re videos regarding the how to set up a clinic, videos regarding the kingdom differentiations, videos regarding uh, material medical, how to study material medical, how to study organ, and how to study repertories, and different cases, presented cases also. From that also, you can learn the process of case taking and about the Swara Homeo Gurukul also there. And one more thing, one more interesting video is that about the P formula, about the case taking and about the homeopathic science and art. There are any n number of things. And there is also a videos about the miasms. 
and videos also in different languages also available in this Swara Homeo Gurukul channel. So you can, when you have the leisure time, you can go to this channel, Swara Homeo Gurukul channel. You can subscribe that and you can like that and you can get enrich your knowledge. So thank you so much. Thank you for giving this me opportunity for this wonderful opportunity and uh, providing us this platform to share my experience. So thank you each and everyone for this great opportunity. Now any doubts, you can come with your doubts. You can type in chat box. So if anyone is having any doubts, you can come with your doubts regarding this topic. So here the students are many students are there very uh, students are there i want to suggest i want to give some suggestions to them i can utilize this stage because homeopathy practice is not that easy and that hard that it is not that hard also the one thing you have to there is dedication discipline and that determination to learn the things. You have to involve in the process and you have to learn the things. Then only you will get the knowledge of homeopathy. Because our system medicine is very different from other system of medicine. If you want to learn these things, you have to be a very involved. You have to be dedicated. It is not learned in one or two classes or in one or two years takes the time. You have to give time to yourself to enrich yourself. You have to read different types of books. You have to see different videos. You have to attend the seminars, workshops. Then only you can get that confidence to practice the homeopathy. Otherwise, we will roam here and there. If you want to settle in life or settle in practice, home homeopathy practice, very easy way is to give your dedication, determination. Give your time and energy for this system, at least for two to three years. Before, If any student want to shift their field, if they want to go to allopathy side because they are going to uh, as a duty doctors, if they want to shift, at least you try in your system. You spend your time, your energy in your system at least for two years. If it is not working, then you work out with your lecturers, your professors, your seniors. They will guide you. In these two years, you have to take the uh, guidance from your seniors, professors and everyone. You have to be dedicated. Then you can learn. Even though you are not getting that you you are not giving 100% to your practice. If you give 100% to your system, the system will give 200%, more than 200%. So, it is my suggestion that every student here be dedicated, be involved and learn the things. This student life, learn everything, every materia medica, every repertory, organ of medicine. Very important, daily one aphorism, daily one drug, because those who are practicing successfully, they all are learning the organ of medicine. They all, all are learning the materia medica. They are, they all are going through the repertories. So don't, don't uh, avoid your basics. 
so study your basic daily basis then only you can improve your <clears throat> knowledge and personally and professionally you can improve your life thank you so much yeah. i hope there is no doubt Thank you, Dr. Banu. It was really an excellent session. Well paced. Uh, all the cases that you have showed uh, were really enlightening. I hope students will take benefit out of this. And uh, all the students, please stay connected uh, with our YouTube channel and Instagram channel as Dr. Banu has suggested. And you will get the regular updates about new videos that we are up uploading or new events that we are doing for you. Of course, free of cost, you can... Uh, Utilize this learning and this video will be shortly uploaded on the YouTube channel. You can re-listen this video and study and please do share this video with all your friends, those who are not available to listen to this video right now. Thank you very much for all the uh, help that is extended by the principal and the coordinators. And thank you, Dr. Bhanu, for your precious time.